Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. It's the big week in at Belmont Park, the racing festival, the Belmont Stakes, and all of those grade one races, Brian. Yeah, Friday is excellent. Saturday, even better. And of course, Saturday, Matt, is led by the Belmont Stakes. Let's uh, put up our cover boy. Oh, there he is. Tappet Rice. Can Tappet Rice rebound from his Kentucky Derby loss? We're going to talk about the Belmont Stakes now, Matt. We've been talking about this race for a few weeks, but now we know the field. We know the uh, post positions. We know the morning line odds. You ready to go from one to nine? One to nine. Let's go. Okay, number one, Matt, is the first son of Tappet. They're kind of in a row here. Tappet shoes, 20 to 1 on the morning line. Jose Ortiz will be the rider, Matt. And this is my top long shot. I'm going to say it right away. I like those morning line odds on a horse who's getting better with every start. And I thought ran a very good race last time at Oakland Park. Sounds fair, Brian. And what's wrong with picking a son of Tappet to win the Belmont Stakes as a uh, the sire will be trying to pick up his fifth sired Belmont Stakes winner on Saturday. That's crazy. Uh, clearly the best distance dirt sire in America. Top it. Uh, yeah. Five Belmonts. And I think this horse has a shot. Trained by Brad Cox. He's gotten better with every start. He's lightly raced. He's had plenty of time between races. I think he's ready to fire a long shot shot in the belmont stakes matt number two is tapit trice and the same sire louis saez back aboard as he was for the uh, the derby and the bluegrass and the tampa bay derby kentucky derby just a little bit disappointing matt let me let me look at those morning line odds real quick angel of empire was the favorite for the kentucky derby angel of empire was well ahead of tapit trice in the kentucky derby neither have ran since and the morning line odds maker here for the Belmont says Tapit Trice is the second choice. Well, Brian, I think it's a combination of the Tappet factor combined with the Todd Pletcher factor that is uh, going to give Tappet Trice a lot of action. Of course, we talked about Tappet, the sire, and let's just quickly mention Todd Pletcher, who will also be going for his fifth Belmont Stakes win, so maybe a little kismet there. But to go along with his four Belmont Stakes wins, he's had seven second-place finishes also. Pletcher knows how to get him ready for the test of the champion. Yeah, Pletcher knows how to get horses ready for the uh, Belmont Stakes, for sure. And uh, uh, Tappets uh, have been running in the Belmont Stakes for sure. Tappet Trice uh, showed he was a good horse winning that Tampa Bay Derby, winning that Bluegrass. Uh, maybe the Derby wasn't the best trip. Uh, pretty far back, kind of stuck down on the rail, swung way wide. I don't know. It wasn't a great race, but he looks like a Belmont horse. The expansive racetrack at Belmont should suit his big, powerful gray uh, uh body well Matt as he goes here at a mile and a half for the first time a lot of things point to him I think there should be enough speed where Tappet Trice can uh, be the one running best at the end and and despite the low morning line odds I I tend to think Tappet Trice has a big shot number three is Archangelo and he'll be ridden by Javier Castellano Matt last time Javier Castellano got aboard an up-and-coming horse uh, in the first leg of the Triple Crown, he won it. Uh, maybe this is another up-and-coming Florida wintered horse that Castellano could win two-thirds of the Triple Crown with. Yeah, up-and-coming Florida-based uh, Florida horse uh, that um, is lightly raced also. A lot of the things you said about uh, Tappet Shoes, I think we could say about Archangelo, a horse that is getting better, that seems to have a lot of talent, but with a lower profile trainer. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Jenna uh, Antonucci is uh, bringing the son of Arrogate, who also is bred for a distance. Uh, Archangelo has a win over the track. Um, two promising races to start his career, then a nice maiden win, and then a game win over a talented horse in the Peter Pan over the track. 
That was one turn, nine furlongs. So he'll have to stretch out, but he certainly looks like a horse uh, headed in the right direction. National Treasure, Matt, there he is, the Preakness winner, number four. National Treasure got a pace that he really enjoyed in the Preakness Stakes. I'm not sure he's going to get that in the Belmont as he stretches out to a mile and a half on a different track. Yeah, whether he gets a more pace pressure uh, in the Belmont Stakes than he did in the Preakness, I don't know. We'll see. But we're stretching out to the extra distance with with a field that is much, much, much tougher than that Preakness field and a little historic perspective, Brian, since the year 2000. There have only been three, three horses to win the Belmont Stakes on the front end. And of course, two of them were Triple Crown winners. Yeah, that's right. Uh, uh, American Pharaoh and Justify were able to go gate to wire in the Belmont. This is another Bob Baffert trainee, National Treasure. And, of course, Johnny V is uh, good on the front end. National Treasure, if they leave him alone in the Belmont, he becomes dangerous. But I just have a feeling that it's going to be a little bit tougher early pace than he saw in the Preakness. Let's take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector, Matt. Oh, they're saying a fast pace. I, I don't know if I'd predict a fast pace, but they're, they're predicting a, a pretty solid pace. I guess that's a fast pace for a mile and a half. Yeah, I think so. Uh, um, and, and fast pace in perspective, like you were mentioning, that National Treasure is likely to get more pressure than he saw in the Preakness. Yeah, and, and you see some interesting horses there. My top long shot, Top of Shoes, is close to National Treasure on this pace projector. We also see Forte is pretty darn close uh, a, a few others not far behind as well including il, il miracola a real long shot and hit show uh we'll see if forte is that close but that's interesting the time form us uh we we agree national treasure will be on the lead but look at forte right there ready to get first jump on the preakness winner very interesting in my eyes matt let's go back to our order of uh Post positions here. Il, Il Miracola, 30 to 1. I think he could be higher than that, Matt, for trainer Antonio Sano. Five straight stakes tries. He was not a factor in before he dropped down in class last time and won an allowance race at Gulfstream Park. Yeah. And the only thing I want to add is that both of his career victories were front end scores, including that recent allowance. So maybe, maybe if they're thinking, the only shot that we have is to go early. He could influence the pace. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense because looking at his past performances, he wasn't out there in any of those stakes tries. Yeah. So I think uh, with the same rider aboard, a rider I'm not too familiar with, um, as he went gate to wire last time in the allowance race, Il Miracola should at least show some speed here. As far as when the real, real running begins, I can't mm -hmm. say I like his chances, Matt. Uh, number six, of course, is Forte. Irad Ortiz Jr., Todd Pletcher. We've already talked about Pletcher. Irad Ortiz, nobody wins more races on the Naira circuit than Irad does. Five to two on the one hand. He's won five straight graded stakes. He's a champion. He hasn't been beaten this year. On the other hand, he missed both the Derby and the Preakness with a little bit of a hoof bruise. Yeah, Brian, and I'll, I'll, I'll go with your... Uh... The way you said it, on the one hand, uh, uh, I and I think both of us think that Forte might be the best three-year-old in the country. But on the other hand, you have to be a little bit concerned about the forced layoff that wasn't in the plan. Talk to owner Mike Rapoli at the draw yesterday, and he said... You're going to see something special on Saturday from Forte. Wow, you're going to see something special. So we'll see if we're going to see something special out of the champion. But he is the horse to beat. You, you just look at his past performances, and that's pretty easy to see. Again, five straight, great, five straight graded stakes wins coming into the Belmont. Number seven is another horse who could be out there close to the early lead. He showed a little bit of speed in that hot pace of the Kentucky Derby. And he stayed on well, Matt, but he never looked like a winner. Hit show didn't. Uh, unlucky probably not to uh, 
back up his Withers win early in the year with a Wood Memorial win, though. Yeah, that's for sure, Brian. And, and uh, another one from Brad Cox. I have a feeling that hit show might be the Brad Cox horse that gets overlooked in this in this Belmont Stakes field. He finished fifth in the Kentucky Derby, Brian, and and looked good doing it. Yeah, he looked pretty good. Although in the stretch, he was certainly being passed by other horses. Matt, um, there's hard. It's hard to say anything bad about Hit Show's form. It's run a lot of good races, but on the other hand, are any of those races good enough to beat the likes of Forte and Angel of Empire and Happy Trice? I'm not sure. We'll see. Hit Show is a horse you can't ignore, especially for the exotics. Number seven. Number eight is. Another Brad Cox, the third Brad Cox we're about to talk about here, Matt. Angel of Empire. What I said about Hit Show was there really hasn't been much wrong with his form. Uh, even more so, you could say the same about uh, uh, Angel of Empire. After running second to a stable mate in the Smarty Jones to begin the year, Matt, convincing wins in both the Risen Star and the Arkansas Derby, went off as the favorite in the Kentucky Derby after the scratch of Forte, and uh, he ran a very good race. He was running strongly in the stretch, third, not beaten all that much in the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, all those things that you said, Brian, and the fact that he's third choice uh, on the morning line says you're probably going to get uh, really good odds. Yeah, uh, I'm a little surprised he's the third choice on the morning line. He still might be the second choice on the morning line. I also threw up this pace projector again because I see blinkers on – number eight, and he's a horse who's enjoyed coming from pretty far back in his races. So Cox must be thinking that Angel of Empire is going to be a little bit more forwardly placed this time. You see him there on the pace projector, relatively close in the middle of the pack. Blinkers on, a very good horse in Angel of Empire. The last horse on the list, Matt, is the last horse on the pace projector. That's Red Rat One. He had to be a little bit closer to that Preakness pace because it was so darn slow. Didn't run badly in the Preakness. Should get a better pace here. And he's a horse who is always finishing. Yeah. Um, but continuing with what you said, um, with a stronger pace, he's likely to get farther behind. Uh, in the Belmont Stakes than he was in the Preakness. And historically, it's tough for deep closures to win the Belmont. Yeah, that, that is true. Uh, he showed in the Preakness he could be a little bit closer to the pace. It didn't work out great for him. I think he'll likely be last early here. Eight straight graded stakes, or eight straight stakes races he's running. And he's 0 for 7 in graded stakes with his only win coming narrowly over top of shoes at Arkansas, Matt. I'm going to leave this Belmont Stakes up, but I, I want to talk about some of the other great races we're going to see, Matt, because the Belmont is far from the only thing. We're, we're going to talk about the Met Mile soon as our second race of the week. But, hey, we've got a bunch of big ones on Friday in Italian and Spenderella. It's only five fillies and mares in the Just a Game, Matt, but they're all great at stakes winners, and you got in – Italian and Spenderella leading the way. Yeah, two horses with uh, two uh, uh, mares with pretty great records on the turf uh, uh, in the in the last six months or so. Uh, in Italian for Chad Brown, very different styles. Goes to the lead, says, "Catch me if you can," and they have not been able to catch her very often. Spenderella for Graham Motion comes from off the pace, has done terrific things, including going over to Royal Ascot and running second uh, in a, one of the big, big group ones. Yeah, yeah, it, the two really, really good turf mares, and that's just a game, even with the short field, should be fun. Speaking of great turf mares, how about Warlike Goddess, Matt? I, I'm, I'm kind of shocked still that she hasn't won an Eclipse Award either the last two years. She'll shorten up in the mile and a quarter New York and, and face some decent mares, turf mares in there as well. Yeah, shorten up, Brian, but it's still a mile and a quarter uh, on the turf. And what a terrific record this Bill Mott trainee has. Bill Mott, who could have a pretty big day on Saturday if uh, a couple of his heavy favorites find the uh, winner's circle, including Warlike Goddess. 14 starts, 10 wins, a second and a third. Um, she's one tough mare. 
Yeah, and we're going to keep talking about Phillies, Matt, because the acorn is Friday. Uh, it used to be the first leg of the female triple tiara. Pretty mischievous, and money's gold uh, lead the way here, Matt, and that's very interesting. Uh, uh, mile 16th, one turn, of course, at Thalmont. Money's gold was very game in her first defeat. I, I think she still could be any kind. Pretty mischievous, just won the Kentucky Oaks. Yeah, um, and, and did it impressively with at, at a good price, and now pretty mischievous, has a pretty terrific record with seven starts and five wins and a second and a third. Uh, the Kentucky Oaks you mentioned, the Rachel Alexandra um, also uh, this spring. Different kinds of styles. Uh, when you when you get that long mile and a sixteenth, you get horses that maybe are a little bit more two turned oriented against a horse or horse that's maybe a little more sprinting oriented, like Money's Gold. Yeah, Money's Gold, I, I I think is the horse to beat in here against the Kentucky Oaks winner. There is some speed in the race, and that could be your shortcoming though. You got thirteen horses going two miles on the turf, Matt. Matt, who's the best? Distance that we said top it was the best dirt distance iron America. Who's the best turf distance iron America? Any idea? Oh God. Uh, there there are many. I don't know. English Channel has a yeah, 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 yeah. showing in this two-mile Belmont Gold Cup. He's my answer. 13 of them in the Belmont Gold Cup on Friday. Saturday, you're you're loaded again. Again, we're going to talk about the Met Mile in a minute, but uh, Clarier and Secret Oath round four, Matt. The first three rounds have been really good for these top older dirt females. Yeah, what's the what's the breakdown with the four head to heads? Well, Clarier passed Secret Secret Oath uh, made a big move to get the lead in the Breeders' Cup Distaff as a three year old. Clarier, of course, went by her and just missed in that photo. But they've had two uh, very close races this year in Oakland Park. So it's two to one, Clarier. But Secret Oath is due to turn the tables. Yeah, uh, uh, that's true. But uh, Clarier is one tough five year old mare coming down the stretch. She's also the defending champion, Matt. Uh, maybe the race of the day on Saturday, if you're not talking Met Mile or Belmont or. or, or... Or, or just how many good horses in the race. Don't sleep on this Manhattan. I'm a, a big up to the mark supporter, but there are a bunch of good horses going on, uh, going at him in the Manhattan. That's going to be a good turf race on Saturday. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, up the mark ran big, uh, uh, and and as seems to be at his best for Todd Pletcher and Irad Ortiz. There, there are some good Europeans in that race, so uh, it, it should be interesting. Up to the mark is my pick in the Manhattan. What else we got, Matt? Elite Power returns in the True North, his first race since a powerful win in the Saudi Arabia uh, sprint over there. Uh, it, it looks like he found the, the softer spot in the True North. Yeah, and considering he's won six races in a row for Chad Brown. Six in a row. Wow. Arabian Lion, General Jim are the headliners. But wow, is that Woody Stevens a good betting race, Matt? A lot of potential winners there. Absolutely. And and yeah, those those two are the headliners. But but don't count out uh, uh, Drew's Gold, who is a game uh, a fighter down the stretch, stepping up in class a little bit, but unbeaten in four starts. It's going to be a big price. All right. Last but not least, we got to talk about Caravel a little bit. She just keeps winning. She's beating the males. She found a tough spot, though, in this 14-horse field in the Chaper. Yeah, and she's got to face Casa Creed, who has won that race the last two years in a row. Yeah, six furlongs. It'll be interesting because I think Casa Creed, six furlongs, he needs at least six furlongs. And Caravel's been winning all her races at five and a half, so we will see. Without further ado, Matt, let's go to our second race of the week. It's the Met Mile. You ready? Yeah, absolutely. You love this one, Brian. We we got we got our own morning line. We haven't seen a morning line for the Met Mile, so we came up with our own morning line. And of course, Cody's Wish, the great story, another Bill Mott horse to talk about. Cody's Wish is on a roll, Matt. He looked great in his seasonal debut, and he's the horse to beat here in the Met Mile. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we may be talking about Cody's Wish being the best horse in any category, any gender racing uh, in America right now with five wins in a row 
eight wins out of his last nine starts, three wins in a row in grade ones, uh, including the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile, the race at Churchill recently, and the Forgo, different distances, versatility. Um, he's going to be tough to beat, and he's going to be way under two to one in my eyes. Well, there are a lot of horses to bet. He's the clear favorite, for sure. I agree with you there. But there are a lot of good horses to bet here. So I wonder just how low he'll go. Slow down Andy hasn't run since a good performance last year in the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. This is a horse I like. He, he's a graded stakes winner on turf. He was a graded stakes winner on dirt as both a two-year-old and a three-year-old. Tough spot to make his seasonal debut, though. Yeah, it certainly is a tough spot. He's got a couple of... Uh, uh, Third place finishes recently. That includes the the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile behind Cody's Wish and the awesome again out in California. Yeah, and those were very good performances as a three-year-old last year. If he's better as a four-year-old this year for trainer Doug O'Neill, slow down Andy could be a really, really good horse. Let's take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector, Matt. I, I threw this up now for a reason because we're talking about the number three. There he is, Dr. Scheibel. Matt, he had a long layoff, but we know he's a grade one winner as a two-year-old, a grade one winner as a three-year-old. His return race after that long break was very impressive out in California. It was impressive. It was fast. It got big, big speed figures, but it was a three-horse field. Yeah, and, and the second horse was CZ Rocket, don't forget, Matt. But you're right, it was a three-horse field. Uh, Irad Ortiz Jr., is going to be jumping on Dr. Scheibel here. And he looks like the pace of the race. However, time form US pace projector here is saying fast pace. There's other horses who could be very close or pushing early, including the four, hoist the gold, the five, charge it, the seven, repo rocks. So Dr. Scheibel might have to work, but he is the speed of this race. Number four is Hoist the Gold. I, th I think he's a long shot. He's a nice horse, Matt. Um, he could be one of those horses, like I said, close early. Tough spot, though, for Hoist the Gold. Yeah, no wins this year, but a, a couple of nice second places, one of them behind Cody's Wish and the other one in the uh, Grade 3 Commonwealth. Yeah, he ran second to uh, Cody's Wish last time in the Churchill Downs. Number five is a very interesting horse in here, Matt. Charge it. Johnny V. Todd Pletcher, last time he ran at Belmont Park, he won by a million lengths, Matt. I think it's offic uh, it's officially listed as a million lengths. Uh, <laughs> he's been maybe just a little disappointing this year, but uh, back one turn at Belmont, talented horse. He's tactical. He can be close. He can be in the middle of the pack. I think Charge it's a horse to watch out for here. Yeah, I guess we could say he's a classic example of an in and outer, and his best in was that monster performance uh, uh, at uh, Belmont Park, going the one turn mile. If he runs like that, he's gonna be tough. Yeah, if he runs like that, look out. And 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 the one turn mile at Belmont Park is a unique thing. So charge it, a horse to watch out for, Zanda. What about Zandon? One of the best three-year-olds in the country last year, Matt. It's been a while since he's found the winner circle. Uh, he was well beaten last time by Repo Rocks, but it was a prep. If there is good speed, like the time form U.S. Pace Projector says there will be, Zandon might be one who can pick up some pieces here in the Met Mile. Yeah, absolutely. He's got some terrific, uh, terrific finishes uh, in his past performances, including a third in the Kentucky Derby. Uh, most recently was I, a little bit disappointing when he finished second uh, uh, in the Westchester. Um, and you got to go back a little ways to the bluegrass of 2022 to find his last victory. Yeah, it's been over a year. But uh, like we said, there were some good performances in there after that. And second start of the year, Chad Brown, speed in the race. Sandin's one you should at least think about in the exotics in the Met Mile. How good has Repo Rocks for trainer Jamie Ness gotten, Matt? I, I, I list him as the second choice here on our Horse Center odds. I don't know if he'll be the second uh, choice, but on recent form, he darn well should be the second choice. 
Yeah, recent form, five wins out of his last six starts, Brian, at three different tracks, at Belmont, most of them, at Aqueduct, and at Parks, got a couple of grade three victories in those five wins. Yeah, Repo Rocks coming off a big win, one mile over the track where he trounced Zandon last time in the Westchester. A return of that performance makes him a threat in here. But the horse who beat him two starts back is also in the race, Doppelganger. Doppelganger was a big long shot in the Carter mat, but he came flying late down the middle of the track to get the win. He's actually won three in a row for trainer Brittany Russell. Yep, shipping up from Maryland. Uh, we'll have we'll see if he can uh, uh, duplicate that Carter handicap uh, victory. That was a grade one, but this is a much tougher field than that, Brian. It is a much tougher field, and White Abario hasn't beaten much tougher fields of late. Although, if you go back to early last year, he's a grade one winner down at Gulfstream Park. He's run a lot of good races. He's coming off a win. Maybe most importantly, he's he's running for a new barn. Yeah, Brian. Uh, uh, people were talking about that uh, uh, comeback victory in an allowance race at Gulfstream Park. Uh, before the trainer change, but now he's in the barn of recently reinstated trainer Rick Dutrow, who has a way of getting horses to improve. Yeah, White Barrio, an improving White Barrio could be a scary proposition in this Met Mile. But like you said, it's a tough spot. All right, Matt, you ready? Top picks for those two big races, the Belmont and the Met Mile? Whoa, we're ready for top picks already? Top picks. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. I'm going to let you go first and I'm going to have you start with the Belmont. Well, Brian, for me, I was uh, uh, between the two Todd Pletcher horses. You know, the, the Pletcher Belmont factor is too tough for me to uh, pass by. Um, you pick, uh, you, it, it was Tapa Trice or Forte. Um, a lot of good talk about the way Tapa Trice is is training, but you know what? I had to stick with uh, Forte. I just would love to see him come back after everything that's gone on in the last month or so and run a big one. Forte for me. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm with you, Matt, in that I think the two most likely winners of this Belmont Stakes on Saturday, the final leg of the Triple Crown, are the two Todd Pletcher horses, but I just think Tapage Trice this race sets up a little bit better for him with a little bit of speed, a mile and a half on this racing surface. He raced five weeks ago. Forte hasn't run in 10 weeks. I think it could be a tough spot for Forte. I, I certainly fear him. I see him as the horse to beat, but my top pick is going to be Tapage Trice, and I hope he's the third choice in here. How about the Met Mile, Matt? Hey, Brian, I said it before when we were doing our rundown of the Met Mile that Cody's wish right now is the best horse in training in America and an extremely likely winner of the Met Mile. However, I said it before also, I think he is going to be a huge favorite. I think he will be close to even money or maybe less than even money with all those ones in his past performances and the heartwarming backstory which no doubt will be uh, uh, shown again and again on uh, on television. Um, I think he's probably going to win the race, but I got to take a shot against him being at such short odds. And I'm going to go for a big price here. I'm going to go for uh, Rick Dutro improving White Abario. Interesting, Matt. Interesting. I, I think Cody's wish, everything I've seen, it, one mile with speed up front at Belmont Park, a one-turn mile with a fast pace. It, I think this is the race Cody's wish was born to born to win. Uh, he's my top pick. I, I, I do think that Charge It is another horse like White Barrio who could step up on Saturday, but I couldn't pick anybody but Cody's wish as my top pick. All right, Matt, we have our top picks. How about a suggested wager? for everybody watching over this Belmont. It doesn't have to be on the Belmont, but the Belmont Stakes weekend. Oh, Brian, uh, besides the fact that there are so many good horses and so many big races, there are so many wagering prospects with 
I don't know what it is, like seven or eight two-day wagers to go along with wagers on Friday alone, Saturday alone, pick threes, pick fives, galore. So, uh, um, you know, it's still only Wednesday, so there's plenty of time to dig into those past performances for Saturday that just came out last night. But uh, I am going to go with one of those two-day wagers. I, I love them, Brian, because if you're lucky enough to hit the first half and you're alive after the after the first day, you get to think about it all for for 24 hours until the second half comes along and think about how much you might win and, and what you need to happen. So I, I love those two-day wagers. And, and uh, there are a bunch of two-day daily doubles. Uh, from Friday to Saturday, that have a really low takeout also, and that attracts me. I'm going to go with the two-day wager that combines the New York on the turf. We talked about it a little bit earlier. With the Met Mile, I am going to do three $20 daily doubles with Warlike Goddess winning the first leg, and I will put him Put her, excuse me, with Cody's Wish, Charge It, and White Abario in the uh, second half. Cody's Wish, likely to win. If More Like Goddess wins, that's two favorites. But even with that $20 double bet, I'll make a few dollars. But I'm hoping for either Charge It or White Abario to win the second leg. All right, Matt, just like you. I, I like what you did there. I, I'm going to try to get a long shot in there somewhere in my $5 pick three, which includes three great races, the Met Mile, the Belmont, and in the middle is the Manhattan. Up to the mark's been good to me this year. I'm going to stick with him. Tough race, but I think he can do it. I'm going to use Cody's Wish and charge it. My top two picks in the Met Mile with up to the mark, singled in the Manhattan. And then I got the Pletcher horses, sure, Tapit Trice and Forte, but I also got some odds with Archangelo and Tapit Shoes, two horses that would not shock me if they won the Belmont. That's a $5 pick three. Total cost for that is only $40. And if you get one of those longer prices in, like Charge It or Tapit Shoes especially, or maybe even Archangelo, it should pay very handsomely. All right, Matt, that's our show for the Belmont Stakes weekend. What a weekend of racing it will be. Let me get a party shot from you, my friend. Yeah, like I said, so much wagers, so many wagers, so many horses. Uh, take your time, read your PPs, be selective. You don't have to bet all those races. Uh, uh, you can sit there and watch the talented horses in those competitive races. Pick your spots is what I'm trying to say. I'll be out there at Belmont Park on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Say hello if we run into each other. All right, Matt, have fun out there. I will not be at the Belmont Stakes this year, but uh, I want to thank everybody for watching. If you haven't yet subscribed or turned on the notifications or left a comment, do it now for this big show for us. We also want to thank, who else, Matt? Candace Curtis for the race graphics from our home office, Derby Wars, the best contest site out there, our sponsor, and Timeform US for those great race graphics. Folks, enjoy a big weekend of racing at Belmont Park. We'll be back right here next week talking about the results on Horse Center. See you then.